So when diagnosing a training problem, um, if I were to go on site and a customer just said, number four belt is always running off, take a look at it, and I'm walking out to it blind, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the tail of the conveyor, and I'm going to look in the direction of material flow and try and determine which part of it he's talking about running off. So if we look at the tail, I would sight up the belt line, and I would look for the problem. If the belt's running off hard to the left at the tail, right at the tail, then I know my problem is going to be on the return side or in the tail pulley. If the belt's running hard to the left, if, if the belt's coming around the tail good, but by the time it gets through the load zone, it's tracking off, then I know my problem's at the tail pulley. If the belt's running good around the tail, through the load zone, but then, you know, half a dozen or so idlers up, I see it's training off, I'm going to start looking at my loading conditions because I may have a problem with the material coming down, hitting one side of the belt and pushing it over. And that won't manifest itself until it's a couple idlers up the belt line. If I stand here and I don't see it running off until halfway up the belt line, then I'm going to take a look at the structure. I'm going to see is the structure straight, is the structure bowed, or possibly there's just this, a bad idler up there that's turned one way or the other that's steering the belt. There may be a training idler installed on there that the pivot point has locked up and it's steering the belt and it shouldn't be. If I look up and everything's running good and straight the whole way up the belt line and it goes around the head centered on the head pulley, then I walk around underneath and take a look underneath the belt. And you sight right up through underneath you're looking at the belt line the whole way up through. And if I look up through and I see that maybe a few idlers down from the head pulley, maybe the belt's walking off. Now I know I've got a problem at the head pulley. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna see if the head pulley lagging is worn unevenly, if it's missing some pieces. Maybe the bearing started to fail and the customer doesn't know it, but we go up and we look at the head. If the belt's running true around the head pulley and it comes down, you know, halfway or so, midstream, most likely it's an idler. Uh, it could be an idler that one bearing has failed and it's dropped and now it's putting more pressure to one side than the other side, so it's causing drag and acting like a training idler. So it could be something as simple as that. Uh, could be some bent structure. If I'm looking at a belt that has a uh, gravity take-up on it, if I'm centered up on the first bend pulley, but I'm running off down at the bottom at the take up, most likely my bend pulley up there has build up on it, or it has a bad bearing, or it's mounted out of square. Uh, could be any of those things. Sometimes it can be that the um, gravity take up pulley down at the bottom is out of square. You know, sometimes they'll move just from the weight from start stop. Uh, you got to check that out, but if I'm good coming through the top and I'm good coming around the bend and then I'm running off on the out by side on the uh, lower bend pulley, then I'm definitely going to be looking at my gravity take up pulley. I'm going to be looking at it for uneven wear. I'm going to be looking to see if it's mounted squarely. I'm going to be making sure that the gravity take up travels freely, that it's not hanging up on one side or the other. Um, sometimes the posts that the gravity take up is guided on, sometimes they'll become bent. Then we get through the lower bend and we head towards the tail pulley. Again, I'm looking for any problem midstream is likely going to be an idler, possibly a uh, bent structure, something to that effect. Get all the way to the tail and we're back where we started. As long as the problem is a consistent running off at the same location, it's going to be a structure or a component problem. If I'm back there standing at the tail and I'm watching the belt and everything is running nice and straight, then all of a sudden the belt walks over. And then a little while later it walks back. Now I know I've got a belt problem because the tracking issue is following the belt. It's not being caused by a location in the structure. It's being caused by a problem with the belt and the belt's taking that tracking issue around with it as it goes. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look. When it gets over to all the way over as far as it goes, is that where the splice is? If that's where the splice is, then the splice is crooked. 
If the splice is nowhere near the problem that's tracking over and back, then I'm going to be looking, has the belt experienced a lot of damage and has a lot more uh, rip clips in one side of the belt than it has in the other? Or is there a tear in the belt coming in crossways across the belt that's driving all the tension to one side or the other? I'm going to be looking for any kind of belt anomalies that are causing it. If it's running off and it's a brand new belt and the splice is nowhere near the problem and there's no damage to the belt, the belt just walks over and back, then they've probably purchased a piece of belt um, with some camber in it. And it has a, a natural bow to the belt. If that's the case, there's not a whole lot that can be done about it. Um, they basically need to go back to their belt supplier, let them know that they have a problem with their belt, and have the belt supplier come out and look at it for them. So That's pretty much the rundown on how to analyze belt problems with tracking.